Good morning. Good morning. Hang on. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. No? Yeah, you got the hum though. Hang on a second. Okay, how's that? Yeah. Better. Good. Welcome. We're glad you're with us this morning as we gather for worship. Just a, a few announcements before we begin our service under the tent. Um, first, for communion today, we will be receiving communion by intinction. So since we do have kind of an aisle here in the middle, we'll just have you come up as you would in the sanctuary, up via the center aisle, back around the sides. Um, do please let one of the ushers know if you're unable to come up. Um, we'll come out to you at the end for communion as well. At the end of the service today, we are going to gather probably right out here for a picture um, in front of the building. So if you'd like to be part of that picture, just move over this direction immediately following service so we can grab a photo. There will also be a potluck that will immediately follow the worship service as well. So after the picture, you can head across the street and join us for lunch. Next Sunday, October 13th, Music at the Spring, we have our kickoff concert uh, with the Mendelssohn Piano Trio. That's at 3 p.m. on the 13th. Also this afternoon, later today, should be a beautiful day for a hike, for the uh, hike and hot dog roast. That if you haven't signed up for that yet, just make sure you chat with uh, Debbie Leffen so they know they have enough food. Do want to welcome a couple of folks. We was running around teaching today, so I didn't make sure they were all here, but I see Pastor Lorenz and Marsha. Good to have you here today. That's it. Is Pastor, where's Pastor Cromer? There he is. Very good. Do you have some of your family with you today, too? One. Okay. Very good. Happy to have you here. And I don't know whether Pastor Dorset made it today or not. I don't think I saw him yet. So, But welcome. Um, two of our pastors, it's wonderful to have you back today as uh, we acknowledge this milestone in the congregation's history. So we're happy to have you with us today. I know Danielle has one um, musical announcement about the way the choir anthem piece is going to go. So, Danielle, if you want to come up to the... Actually, if you want to just go here, that microphone's not on yet. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, everyone, if you would turn to page 7 of your bulletin for a quick second, you will notice that underneath the title of today's anthem, there is music. This is the crowd participation portion of the special music today. <laughs> As we were looking for an anthem for this special occasion, um, I came across this piece, and uh, not only did I love the piece itself, and the choir has enjoyed preparing it for you, but also loved that all of us could participate in this. So there will come a point at the end of the song where I will turn around and say, you get to sing too, and here's what you sing, yes? So you will turn it a couple times. It is the chorus of the song. So you'll have heard it a couple times, and the choir will be happy to lead you, but we hope you will join us um, in singing. Also, there's a misprint in your bulletin under the communion hymns. Somehow, um, the chorus got printed twice, but none of the verses. That is on um, page 20 and 21, which is a little bit weird, but um, we copied about 65, 70 copies of that song, and they're dispersed amongst you. So the chorus is definitely in here, but find a friend near you that has the uh, that has a copy of that. I see that Sterling has one. Jen has one. So find a friend that has one near you if you would like to sing the words along with us to bind us together and hopefully that will make you for the day. So <laughs> And one other uh, person to announce that's with us today, Pastor Beth Martini. Um, one of our assistants to the bishop is with us. Um, we're happy to have her with us today. She is going to be helping us uh, towards the end of the service as we do the decommissioning of the old building. She will be uh, participating in that part of the service with us as well. So, any other announcements this morning? Most of the time, since you're in your camp chairs, we're going to leave you seated. There may be a time or two, just I'll announce standing and sitting as we go along. But most of the time, since you're in your camp chairs, have a seat and sing loud. <laughs> We begin with confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We pause for a moment of silent confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. We join together in singing our gathering hymn number 641, All Are Welcome.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You fill the entire world with your presence. Your name is to be hallowed through all the earth. Receive our praise and thanksgiving for the blessings, help, and comfort which you bestowed upon your people. Continue your mercies to your church, that we may be conscious of your unchanging love as we take leave of our former place of worship. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me to read responsibly Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject to the coming world, about which we are speaking, to angels. But someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little while lower than the angels, you have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call the brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. According to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Can you hear me? Yes. No, but... No, okay, we're just going to go loudly. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live in you, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Are there kids that want to come forward this morning? You got a surprise. There's some. This is a surprise. How are you? Are you good? So, anybody know what this is? Time capsule. Time capsule, right? So, a couple of our guys took this from the old building so that we can open it up. So today, we're going to see what's in it. So can you help me? Okay. I did the hard part already. There's a few of us that was there when that was inserted. How many of you were there when that was put in? 1951. Oh, wow. So a few. Okay. All right. All right. Should we see what we have? What's that say? So this is a handwritten, which had to take a while, handwritten copy of the rolls from 1951. Wow. What's that say? It says this cornerstone. <laughs> it says it was given by Judith K. Rule. Is that a name some people know? Okay. <coughs> yep, this is a list of all of the council and the organizations, the officers and the committees and all of that kind of stuff from 1951. Okay, how about... This one's what everybody loves. This one was the church constitution from 1951. Notice how small it is. <laughs> it's the print, trust me. It's not much shorter, it's the print. Okay, and this. Oh, this is a letter. This was the architect who helped design things, and it was just their signature and a little note from them in the time capsule. What's that look like, you know? And it looks like me. <laughs> I was not around in 1950. <laughs> but it looks like it's a picture of the groundbreaking. So when they were getting ready to add the addition, that would be a newspaper article from the addition when they put it on. Wow. Okay. What do you think's in here? You think I should do that one last? Okay, all right. All right. It's in the gold box. It should probably do that. Okay. What's that say on the top? The Lutheran. This is the old Lutheran magazine. Okay. Wow. Okay. Any idea what 
what this is? Bulletin. That's the church bulletin from the day that they dedicated and laid the cornerstone in 1951. Okay? And so you're going to hear more about this actually during the sermon. But their bulletin's a little shorter than ours, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. The services weren't, but the bulletin was. <laughs> okay. So the last thing, any guesses as to what this is? <laughs> what do you think? Any guesses? What if I told you? I already know what's in this. Book. What if I told you the whole Bible is in here? Do you believe me? I'm believable, right? I'm not trust me. <laughs> a little copy of the Bible that's in there as well. See that? It's a super small print. I'm not even going to try to read it. I'm not even going to try. And there was one other little thing in there. What do you suppose this is? A coin. Yeah. It's a silver dollar. You get this from Tooth Fairy? Okay. <laughs> That they put that in there as well. So all of these things are part of our history as a church, right? So what do you think? Oops. What do you think of all of this stuff that's in here? What's changed? Has our have the roles changed? The roles are like the list of people that are part of the congregation. That's changed, right? You think so? It's bigger, okay? <laughs> so our bulletins have changed. The Lutheran has changed. There's been lots of versions of the newspaper come out since then. Our constitution has changed. Right? The roles have changed. Our council and our officers have changed. But the Bible, and we might use a slightly different translation now, but the Bible is still around. And the Bible is still what we preach on Sunday mornings. It's what we use in worship. It's what we learn about in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. And so what I want you to remember today is no matter how much things change, God and God's word are always here and always present. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for all of our history. We give you thanks for the fact that you have been with us since the very beginning of this congregation. And we know that you promise to be with us always. We give you thanks today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for helping me unwrap all this stuff. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay in the back? I will try to talk loud, but I am not in good voice today, so I apologize. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Trindle Spring Lutheran Church has been a community of Christ gathered in this place for 259 years. This building, our current building, even the old building that sat back in the corner, the log building originally, were all places for this community of faith to gather together for worship, for study, for service, for laughter, even for tears. This congregation has welcomed and even said goodbye to many pastors. This congregation has baptized many people. How many of you were baptized at this spot? No. Yeah. This congregation has buried many people. How many of you have buried loved ones in this place? How many of you married, were married in this place? We've said hellos. We've said plenty of goodbyes along the way. We've rejoiced in welcoming new members as well. It's simply who we are, it's what we do as a community of Christ when we gather together. Those things are all a part of who we are, but they are not the things that define us. 
what is it that identifies us as a congregation? What identifies us as people of God? For many years, this church was known as what? The Farmer's Church, right? This was the country church. Or it may have been known as the Lutheran Church on the outskirts of town. It's been a family church for generations. In looking through the roles, which I did the other day after I opened up the time capsule, when you when you read through those roles, if you've been here for a while, there are a lot of familiar names. There are a lot of names, even for me, I've been here nine years now, a lot of names that I know simply because of the families that are still here. When I moved here, the congregation was known by something else. Right, when I came to town, I remember talking to my neighbors, and they said, what do you do for a living? They said, oh, I'm a pastor. I'm out at Trindle Spring Lutheran Church. It's kind of on the west end of town. And usually they looked at me with a puzzled face and said, I, I don't know where that one is. The one thing that usually let people know which congregation I was talking about was what? Food. Country fair. Country fair. Country fair. It was the country fair church, yeah. right? So here's the thing. Most of those identifiers, they don't apply to us anymore, right? Our gospel reading for this morning talks about what defines us together in our life together as Christians. So Life Together, that's the name of the preaching series we're going to be having over the next few weeks. It's the, the Bible study, the, the study that we're doing during the Sunday School Hour as well, as we look at Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he has a book by that title of Life Together. God's people, whether it's around the world or whether it's here at Trindle Spring Lutheran Church, are defined and shaped by God and the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. That is who defines us. This congregation, as you know, is no stranger to change, and it's no stranger to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Trendle Spring has never been called to be stagnant. It's never been called to simply exist. Even the progression of this building, 15 State Road, as it was added onto, built onto in its different phases, even the move to the current building. It's all the movement and the work of the Holy Spirit, helping us to do God's work as best we can. In the time capsule, there were a number of things. Right? Among them was the bulletin from April 29, 1951, the day that they put that in the cornerstone. The bottom of the first page, I shouldn't even say first page because it's only one sheet of paper, but at the bottom of the front inside cover, it says the secret of growth. And then it said grow, G period, R, O period, reach one of the period after it. Grow, go right on working. It got me thinking though, what is it that we, what do we think about in terms of growth? How do we grow as a church, as Christians, because if we're talking about numbers, if you look at the roles from 1951 versus the roles from 2024, they're a little different. There aren't as many people on the roles. There aren't as many people in worship on a Sunday morning. Is God's growth talking about numbers? If we use that old bulletin from 1951, grow, go right on working, to me what growth really means is, are we growing in the ways in which we love God, serve other people? Are we growing in the ways we seek God's kingdom here and now? And maybe that sounds a little simplistic, but I think there are too many times when we make God's work far too complicated. This might be surprising to you, but it's not our job to grow the church, right? That notion of grow in the bulletin is about us growing, us growing as disciples, as individuals, as a community of Christ together. But God is the one who provides the growth. We plant seeds. 
we plant seeds, we nurture them as best we can, and trust and hope in the promise that God will provide His work. All we can do is be faithful in our witness, faithful in our worship, faithful in prayer, faithful in our service to others. But let's admit it, it gets frustrating at times, or at least it can, when it seems like the work we do doesn't always have the impact that we might want it to have. We don't always get to see the results of the seeds that we plant. And there might be reasons to just stop. All too often, we probably do stop to stop to complain. We stop because it doesn't seem like we're making a difference We might stop because people aren't getting along or everything just seems too new. Sometimes we stop and reflect because we ask ourselves, are we doing what God wants us to do or are we just out there on our own? Our gospel reminds us this morning that we're never on our own. We're never abandoned, that God never leaves us alone. In our gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that he's sending the Holy Spirit to be with them, to be in them, to fill them up. And God promises to do the same for us as well. Because the Holy Spirit continues to dwell in us. The Spirit is continually inviting us to grow. Go right on working working for the kingdom of God. And with God's help, that's really the main thing we can tend to, right? We can tend to what we do as individuals and as a community. We can control whether or not we deepen our faith through prayer, scripture, and worship. We can control whether we look to grow in our understanding of God and scripture. Sunday school, Bible study, We can control whether we live out our faith in the ways in which we tend to our relationships, we gather together in fellowship, and serve the community around us. We live in a world that focuses far too much on the things that they don't have, the things that we don't have, or even sometimes the things that we're losing. Today, our gospel reminds us we have a spirit of truth in us. That is all we need. That is all we need in order to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. I've had plenty of conversations with folks. I've been here long enough to know that the decommissioning of this church, the demolition, is an emotional thing. I'm fully aware of the toll that it takes on people and the grief that it's brought about. All I can say is that when you see the pictures of what happened in this building years and years ago, baptisms and weddings and amazing things, when you think about those things, when you see those pictures, the same spirit that filled those moments, the same spirit that guided the congregation 295 years ago, is the same spirit guiding and leading with us today. God does not and will not leave us ordinary. I want to share one other thing from that 1951 bulletin. And I don't know whether Pastor Rao wrote it himself or if he found it someplace, I'm not sure. But there's a prayer at the very end of the bulletin and it's I think applicable as much today as it was in 1951. Before I warn you, I took the old English out so that I could actually say it and so that you would actually understand it. You, O Lord, are our guiding spirit. You are our strong right hand. In your name and for your glory, increase our faith. Give us courage and a spirit of unity. Help us to believe beyond a doubt that without you we can do nothing worthwhile, but that with you all things are possible. Give us hearts which forgive and love and hope and make our church your church in every sense. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 
Make our church your church. My favorite line in the whole thing. It's what we need to always remember as God's people that regardless of the building we're worshiping in at the moment, we are God's church. God's people who are planted right where we need to be to continue to grow. Go right on working. With the help and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Church, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, the people in need, and all of creation. God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal and justice. Today, items from around the world will be gathered in and blessed for the work of Lutheran World Relief. Bless their ministry and the outreach that they, that they do <coughs> to all in need. And may, may their work be seen as your love outpoured. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator of all, direct our lives toward the renewal and sustaining of your creation. Reveal the ways we can work for the good of your world. Move us to acts of mercy and compassion. Use your church to provide for all those in need especially those who find themselves in the wake of Hurricane Helene and other natural disasters around our world. Use us as your presence to reach out to those in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, 
We give thanks that you are mindful of us. Accompany us when hardness of heart gets in the way of justice between people and nations. Endow leaders with minds for justice and hearts for compassion. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restoring, Lord, grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick and suffering. We pray for all those on our prayer lists. We pray especially this day for Pat Beaver, Doris Gokenauer, Shirley Hess, Angie Hummel, Sandy Furtenbaugh, Mary Furtenbaugh, Steve Westby, Linda Folds, Eileen Turnbaugh, Charlie and Dorothy Miller, Russell Crawl, Mary Paulus, Ralph and Josie Clay, Lynn Nybert, Gordon Ryder, Ken Ryder, Lois King, Paula Duffy, Steph Eichelberger, Beth Bayshore, Diane Dayton, Margot Crum, Betty Smith, Gail Seaman, the families of Derek Vogelsong, Earl Furtenbaugh, Linda Rogers, and Lawrence Ryder, and these we name before you now. We pray for all these and those with no one to name them. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Unifying God, humans were created for relationship with you and with the earth and other creatures. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, relationships, and unity among us. May your love inspire us to build supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayer. God of resurrection, you prepare a place in the kingdom of God through Christ's death and resurrection for all. We give thanks for the saints who have taken their place at your heavenly banquet and await with hope the day when we join them in the glory of your presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
by these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. So come, 
you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, come, come. Christ promises to meet us here.
of God. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please pray with me. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into a single will through the sacrament of your Son. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed for the true joy is found. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you are able, would you please rise for the deep Commissioning and thanksgiving. O oh Lord, we give thanks for the word proclaimed in spirit and in truth, the prayers prayed, the songs sung, the singers and the musicians, the bread and the wine, the water and the children, the teachers and the preachers, the confirmations and affirmations, the marriages and the promises the funerals and the comforts, the laughter, the tears, the hopes and the fears, and the sighs too deep for words. We give you thanks, O oh God. Such things turn a building into a house of worship. Such things make the distance between heaven and earth seem slight. The Lord loved, a people shaped. The kingdom life lived. Bread for the world, light in the darkness salt in the city, grace to the stranger, hope for the world. We give you thanks, O oh God. Lord, we give thanks that what has taken place in this house of worship has sent ripples of hope into the community. Things we know of and much hidden from us, 
yet signs nevertheless of your love that has led us out to serve as we have been served, to love as we have been loved, to forgive as we have been forgiven, to trust that God has used us despite our shortcomings. We give thanks, O oh God. Today, while we acknowledge the passing of the season of this house of worship, we pray that your hand will continue to guide us and bless us in the new season upon us. Help us to be attentive to you as we seek to serve you in this community. We give you thanks, O oh God. In the quiet, we reflect on our time in this building, and we remember with gratitude those who we have sat with, who know are no longer with us. With a clear understanding that our God is not confined to buildings made by human hands, we, the people of this church and community, grateful for our heritage and mindful of the sacrifices of those who have gone before, dedicate ourselves anew to the service of God in spirit and truth and to the service of all people in the spirit of Christ. As we decommission the former church building at 15 State Road, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, O God. O God, as in your great goodness you have blessed the many ministries carried on by this congregation in this building, so now and in the days and years to come, we pray that you continue to bless the many ministries in your church that never end. As disciples of the risen Christ, may you live out God's steadfast love in all times and places through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn. He's got the whole world in his hands. us in mind, body, and spirit. 
keep us in your care, O oh Lord, as we go out from this place seeking to do your will in our lives according to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whom we pray and give thanks. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will.